Hello everyone and welcome to Total War Feral Dynasties. This is going to be the first part of our hopefully long-running Babylon campaign with Adad Shuma Asur at the head. For those of you that have already watched the original first episode, we shall call it, um, unfortunately we are starting again because our faction leader did die in the first battle in about the 30, first 30 seconds when we engaged the AI, which was terrible. I initially thought it was just me sucking at Total War <laughs> but it turns out it wasn't, and it is indeed a bug, which CA are looking to patch or provide a hotfix for, hopefully very soon, uh, because I've found out that a lot of people are suffering from the same issue, where their faction leader does die relatively quickly in combat. And given that these are meant to be superior elite units, it shouldn't really happen. I think the, the first battle, to be honest, we actually didn't suffer that many losses. And the general's unit didn't actually suffer that many losses either. He just happened to be one of the first people to die, which was very unfortunate. But I'm going to skip through um, the opening cutscene and dialogue as well because we did go through them in the first episode. If you'd like to watch them, then please feel free to go back to the first episode uh, and watch them. That's not a problem at all. I'll still leave the video up. It'll be part of the playlist. But for everyone else, let's jump straight into the... Babylonian campaign. I still have very little experience or um, knowledge of the game, so I am looking forward to playing it and getting more in depth. We've only played one battle, or fought one battle, and played through a, a turn or two, so I am excited to see what else has been added and updated. If you guys are playing through the Dynasty campaign, let me know your thoughts on it. If you prefer it to the base game, what changes you most like about it? Or do you think that they could still change or update to make it better? The city of Bat Okay, the faction summary we've been through, there's a lot of information to take in, particularly if you're new to the game like me. But here is Babylon itself. So it's a one settlement province. But we do have several outposts. Some have already been built for us. So we have the Can Didric. Oh, that's the province, isn't it? Sorry. That is the province we're in. So we have the Etemenanki, I think that's how you say it, outpost. And then we also have the Shrine of Marduk. Both provide different bonuses, but very good to us. Obviously, favour, happiness, food, um, some legitimacy, and movement on land, which is good for us. We can move further. Obviously, in the top, we've got our resources, so we've got plenty of food. And it says we're getting about 1,000 food a turn, which is really good. Um, we've got a lot of stone to start with, but we haven't actually got any stone being produced. So that's something we're going to have to look at in the short term. Wood as well, we've got a bit of wood, um, but we are getting 171 per turn, so that's good. Bronze, we start off with quite a lot. Again, our income is only 4, and that'll probably go, and what of my status? go below positive. So go into the negative, should I say, um, when we recruit a couple more units, I believe as the units are the main expenditure for it and then gold as well so that's something that we don't have a lot of and we are already losing 21 a turn and I imagine that's going to grow obviously the more units we get so that's something else we're going to have to look at so the main issues we have at the start is our lack of income for gold and bronze in particular and obviously stone here's our faction leader Adad Shuma Asur we do indeed call you the king of Babylon that is indeed who you are He's got a pretty ragtag army to start with. Some chariots, um, which I wasn't overly impressed with in the first battle, to be honest. Um, but these Babylonian specialists, which I have now learned are slingers, essentially, um, are very good. They are really good. Considering there's only 60 men in the unit as well, they can do a, a really good job at decimating the enemy before they get the into melee range. Bless our lands. And then if we score to the east, we have Uruk as well, which is our second settlement that you start with. Happiness is on the decline, so that's something we need to bear in mind. And I think we're just going to go straight away and upgrade the main settlement building. So upgrade it from oh, an office to a centre. Okay. This gives us um, some more garrison units, which is good, because this settlement is quite isolated from any army we've got at the minute. It gives us some more, more workforce growth some additional production to all resources in the region, which is good. 
um, but it does give plus one to our administration burden, which is this bar at the top. So it seems like we get a lot of benefits at the minute with our bronze upkeep and food upkeep. But the further you go along, you get hit with um, enormous <laughs> upkeep, which is it seems ridiculous, to be honest. I mean, at the top tier, you suffer a, an increase to your gold, bronze and food upkeep by 140, 120 and 140% respectively, which is insane. But, but then you also get some additional benefits like plus 30% movement on land, plus three recruit rank for all units and generals faction wide. Whether you think that's a good payoff, I don't know. We'll see when we get there, if we ever get there. But that seems like a hell of a lot of gold, bronze and food. For what could be a, a not very substantial upgrade. But anyway, we're going to upgrade the settlement building at Uruk. In Babylon, we do have enough resources to upgrade the baths. However, I'm going to hold off on that. Because we currently have two workers, or idle workforce. And then once we reach 60, much beauty. we're going to get another worker, which will take us up to three. And that's what we need to upgrade the military barracks. And that's what I'd like to do, because at the minute, all we can recruit are Arcadian they farmers. Me and, I agreed. and they are pretty rubbish, I'll be honest. <laughs> they are terrible. But it's the only thing we are allowed to recruit. Whereas if we get the barracks building, we then get access to the Arcadian militia, Spear Militia and the Archer Militia as well. So that'd be quite good. Now, first things first, we have two armies in our land from the Quingu Dynasty, or faction, that we need to deal with. Bother someone else. So we have this chap here who needs to die first. And then we also have Balassi behind him. Now, it's going to be quite tricky. I don't think we're going to be able to take out both About armies in one turn. Breathe Let's see. Last, Let's see how we do here. I mean, the auto resolve or balance of power is heavily in our favour. And to be honest, I haven't actually auto resolved yet. You'd think that it would be a very easy win. But we can take quite a few losses. So predicted enemy casualties high, predicted own casualties low, that's quite that's good to know. All units in red will be destroyed in this battle. All units in yellow will be severely damaged. I don't know what that means. Is that the percentage or the health bar of the unit maybe? Anyway, we are gonna fight you. I always prefer to fight battles if I can. Let's see if the general dies in this one. If he does, um, we won't be restarting again. <laughs> I think we'll just have to carry on. Which will be a shame. I would prefer it if he didn't die. But I don't think we can keep restarting. Are you ready to mount your attack? I am ready to mount my attack. Thank you. So what have the got? We've got hunters, farmers, militia, the general which we need to kill. Militia, farmers, farmers, hunters, hunters, okay. So, how do we want to play this then? Hunters I'm quite scared of because they are javelins, they do a lot of damage. But I think if we can get into melee with them, it might not be such a bad issue. And then what I'd like to do is focus fire their commander if we can. So we'll stick the chariots. I mean, they're going to have to cross water, which isn't going to be ideal. Maybe we should go over here, actually. Keep to the plan. We'll stick the general there, and the chariots can roam. And they can go on skirmish mode as well. You guys go on guard. I don't want them charging out. Okay, I think we're done. Uh, in terms of the ranged shots as well, what I mentioned. I don't know if I mentioned it already. Um, it's quite cool, actually. So they've got two different 
um, arcing or direct shots types. The whistling shot as well is there, but I think that's specific to certain Embrace units. Your fury. Yeah, like the slings don't have it. So you can do a direct shot, which does more damage, armor piercing, and uh, lethality, but it's a reduced range. Whereas the oh, arcing shot good thing we brought plenty obviously of has stones. longer range, um, but does less damage. The only thing I haven't seen yet or even tried is the arcing shot obviously would work, I assume, if you're shooting over your units. However, is the direct shot, will that have to be literally direct or can you still have the direct shot but shoot over your own units? So that's something we're going to have to experiment with. A map gives a battle commander a godlike view. Use the maps at your disposal to plan your tactics. We are just going to... Like I say, focus fire their general, because morale, particularly early in the game, plays a huge key, as I've found out even in our previous battle. We'll fast forward this as well. So if we kill the general, they'll obviously take a huge morale hit. That's also why we need to try and keep ours alive. What I am going to do is send out our chariots. We can start shooting the Acadian Hunters. Right, so you guys... Everybody target the General. That's who we need to kill. So I'll take them out if you can. Right. Now, I'd like to try and take out the Javelins if I can. See, the only problem with this is now we're just going to get pelted by these, aren't we? Your foe attacks your flank. Drive. Yes, I know. Men, check armaments. Right, we're just going to get them to charge in, I think. Patience in battle. We'll get the chariots to run down the hunters. And we're going to get the general to charge in on the farmers. And then these guys should be killing the general. General's waving already, that's good. Alright, our general's just joined the fight. This is going to be interesting. Is he going to die straight away? We'll find out. Hopefully he doesn't die. I would have expected the general to be killed by now. Alright, well our right flank and centre have completely collapsed now. I was hoping we would have killed the general, but we haven't. Come on, just kill the general. Fight with pride. Let's fly. He's getting annihilated now. That's good. What are we doing over here? Our oh, general's starting to take some casualties. How could it end like this? Right, general's dead now, so that's good. I think they should be routing. Yeah, looks like they're routing. See that we've killed the general and they pretty much were out instantly. So we'll see what we can kill off. Let's fast forward. You guys can run them down. And you run them down for me. I think that's all we're going to get really now, isn't it? Yeah, that'll do. So, how many did we lose? We lost 352. The Babylonian Specialist, it looks like. And the Syracu Archers, both getting 119 kills. That's not too bad. We destroyed most of the army. Hmm. 
And we killed the general as well. But I don't know if they're going to be able to retreat. Oh well, okay. Oh, there's that Blood and Sand DLC kicking in. So we captured 118 as well. Got a bit of gold, bronze, food and experience from that. I think we'll take the replenishment, to be honest. Our canals need more workers. I get things done. We certainly do. They call me King of Babylon, and that is oh. who I am. We've ranked up as well. So let's, I forgot about this actually. So I have since learned as well, these signed titles, it looks like these are basically abilities. And you can have four abilities per general. And then you need to get to a certain level of presence, fortitude, or ardor before you unlock unlock certain ones. So we've just assigned the Trix's fours, which grants an ability to the bodyguard unit, it looks like. Um, ambush. Which means it loses 20% speed. But they become unspottable and they have the stalk ability as well. Which, as it says on the screen, um, the unit can hide in its current location and will not be spotted until the enemy is very close, which is quite good. And the unit can move hidden in any terrain. And then we can also rank up. Or level up. And the question is, what do we go for? So movement speed is pretty good. Ability cooldown, I'm not too concerned about that really. Replenishment rate is always good. I do like replenishment. And upkeep a line of sight as well. Obviously upkeep, we save more. Save more resources actually. It's not just one particular resource, is it? It's going to save us a bunch of resources in the long term. By 2% as well. So I think actually we're going to go for that one. Okay, so saved us a tiny bit there. We saved a gold, <laughs> and I think was that a couple of bronze. So not the not the worst thing in the world. Now we also need to pick a royal decree. Uh, I did bypass this the last time as well. We already have the administrative administrative efficiency unlocked, which gives us a minus one workforce cost across the faction, which does allow us to get stone shapers. Uh, unfortunately, it's going to be no use because plus 10% of nothing is still nothing. So I think we're just going to stick with what we went for last time, and that is the longer festivals, which is plus 3 happiness. That will certainly be important for Uruk, as I believe they're losing happiness right now. Yeah, minus 4 per turn, which is not good. Now, what else are we going to do? I think let's have a look at the outposts first. So in Uruk, we can build two more outposts. We've already got the White Temple of Anu. I think in the far sort of northeast here, it would be good to get a military outpost. Again, I'm not too confident with these, so I, like I said, I don't know what the, the provides garrison bit means. It sounds stupid, obviously, but I mean, I, I don't know if the outposts come with their own garrisons, if they're actually battles. Or is that garrison just sent to the settlement in the region? If you know, please do tell me. But I think, given that, we will actually build the Mesopotamian lookout post. As it provides three units. So I'm hoping... Lookouts are the eyes of our land. A great leader is all seeing. Yes. Um, I'm hoping they actually send them to the settlement. And then that will increase the garrison size, which should be good. And then the other outpost we can look at, again, because we're suffering with the happiness being minus at the minute, I think it's probably worth getting the religious shrine of Marduk. That gives us plus five happiness. So that will take us out of the negative straight away, but also give us plus eight percent food and 50 favor. Prayer so we'll definitely grab that power. one. Then in Babylon itself, we already have two being built. We have the Shrine of Marduk already, and the Etimenanki, if that's how you say it. So again, it's probably worth getting a military outpost. question is, which one do we want? I'm not too concerned. I mean, they all seem to cost a lot of stone, and I'm not too concerned with that at the minute, because we do have a lot of stone. 
Uh, upkeep of units stationed in the fort is minus 50%. That's quite good. I'm not sure what the part means where it says army units from the fort. No, not that one. Sorry. Where is it? Um, allows an army to exchange units. I don't know what that means in terms of do you, can you exchange them for better units? Because normally if you had another general leading an army, you could just exchange units between those armies. So I, I don't know if you can sort of garrison units at, at outposts, maybe. But let's build it anyway, and let's find out, I suppose. That's all we can do. And then we can build other things. There's a lot of buildings, actually, in Babylon. A hell of a lot of buildings that I haven't even been through yet. So we'll we'll leave them for a rainy day. But we have gained... Ooh, we've gained some extra items, actually, for our general. So, let's have a look at those. So we've got Rolling Thunder. Plus 10 armor. But this ancillary cannot be equipped together with the current shield. So you can't have that if you have a weapon or a mount. Right. So damage V large plus 8. That gives us melee defense plus 4. And grants ability charge defense against large. Okay, so we'll, we'll keep the Minoan Spear. But interesting about the mount. I wonder if you equip that. Ah, oh, yes, it does change to a spear chariot. That's interesting. So they can't capture, but they're good against missiles, apparently. And it even tells you the changes as well. Okay, this is quite cool, actually. So we'd be a lot faster, but we'd have a lot less melee attack and melee defense. But we'd do more damage and have a higher charge bonus as well. This unit has a shield and will block 55% of all missiles fired hitting from the front. Okay. That's quite good. But we can equip that. That's certainly something to bear in mind. I do like that you've got the option to sort of change your general's bodyguard unit. Now the question is, do we try and attack Balassi? Do we just try and wipe them out now? He's only got seven units, we've got nine. However, ours are no depleted. I think we're going to go for it. Breathe your last, Assyrian. Okay, so it is still in our favour. And if we were to auto-resolve... I don't know what that means on the left-hand side. If you look at our general's portrait and two of our units... Is that like a, a red arrow pointing down? Does that mean they die? Not quite sure what that means. But anyway, this guy's got three Akkadian farmers and three Akkadian archers. And then he also has a spear and shield bodyguard, which is pretty similar to ours, I think. Okay. Well, we're going to fight it. Let's see what we can do. We haven't got many chariots, unfortunately. But I think what we're going to do with them is literally just charge them at the archers. Try and drive them away. And then maybe get our general charged into another unit. So he's not actually engaged with the melee infantry. We'll definitely stick with the dry weather. Thank you. Oh, we start a bit of a good note bloody slope as well. I would have liked that hill. I suppose we'll just try and rush up there. See if we can claim it. However, we do outrange them though. That's the problem. And I'd like to try and keep that. There isn't really anywhere else we can go. Although this would be nice, wouldn't it? They'd have to cross the sort of river. Let's see if this works. Can we hide chariots in trees or not? I don't imagine you probably could hide chariots in trees. Doesn't look like you can. Keep away, men. Right, let's see if they come to us. In terrain such as this, every natural feature may conceal enemy forces. Thank you very much. 
We don't really have ranged superiority. And we did attack them. Provide your troops with impenetrable cover against enemy eyes. He's full of helpful tips, that one. Yeah, it doesn't look like they're going to come towards us. Oh. Have one group of your troops engage the enemy head on. All right, send the chariots across. So we can see them now, and they can definitely see us. And it does look like they're actually coming down to us. Okay, that's good. And probably this left side here. So if we reposition... And we stick our melee forces there. And we can sort of charge them, hopefully. Oh, chariots. Charge them. Okay, they're not they're not coming down. Well, let's see if we can get rid of this unit of archers. Oh wow, we can. We lost a lot of chariots though. Oh, that's not good. Oh, but I think it was enough for them to attempt to come down. Yes, it was. Beautiful. Right, that's good. So we do have range superiority. I think chariots. He's still wavering. You are. <laughs> well, pull yourselves together and run down that arch unit for me. And then our units can start shooting at these guys. No hesitation. Crack open their skulls. On we go. Should have positioned them slightly better. That's my fault. I think they're going to get a uh, yeah, speed minus 20% as well, so it's going to take them longer to get through the water. They're already wavering. So start shooting them. Specialists start targeting the general for me. I can't see them all. I do wonder if they're going around the other side. So that's something we'll have to be prepared for. Alright, all melee units charge him. Oh, the general. We've got more archers. Yeah, pull out, actually. Just pull out. Right, you guys start shooting the farmers for me. Don't kill our own men. You guys can kill the general. Right, let's send the chariots back over the hill. See if we can run down another arch unit. Oh, you can even see the blood going into the river as well. Oh, that's so cool. I really like that. Right, I'm going to bring these down. It's good. Everyone's routing. Charge those archers for me. Oh, see, I knew they'd do that. I knew it. I said that they would come around the other side, didn't I? And that's exactly what they've done. They're only farmers. We'll just get everyone to charge in. Get our general to attack him as well. Their general's still standing strong though. Oh, and our chariots are wavering as well. Right, charge in there. Running downhill. They're already shaking. I can't believe their general's still standing. He's not taking many casualties at all. Right, you three pull out. 
I'll let the general take care of these farmers. Try and reform as quick as you can. Attack the enemy. Victory beckons. Arrows knocked. How are you doing, General? Then large shields and spears, blood splatter on the screen. Oh, it's even turning the grass red as well. Take out them. We don't want them coming back. The gods are watching. Good, General. You run down the farmers. Dirty bloody peasants. Their general's wavering. Oh, that's it. Alright, make sure you run him down. Oh, there's a unit of archers, or they're going to get away. That's annoying. I'm going to try and kill the general as well. So, make sure you run him down. Let's look at them all, I'm trying to run. Oh, he's got an arrow. Right through his chest. He's got one in his back. He's got two. Jesus Christ, look at this guy. He had two in his back and he was still running. Oh, this is awesome. I'm loving this battle. The fields and the water running red with the blood. Splatter on the screen. It's a very nice touch. It's certainly an upgrade from Medieval 2. Okay, that was a pretty good battle. We lost 192, but we killed 568. And the archers actually getting 152 kills. The Syracuse archers. So that should be both armies destroyed now. Oh, brutal. Well, the general dead. Everyone did their part. Bravo. What do we want now? Morale for two turns, replenishment. That's only 2%, that's not much, is it? Uh, let's take the... We might as well take it. Teach them a lesson. Always look at the big picture. Okay, so they have run off. And we're just out of range Babylon, as well. And that is who I am. Which is quite annoying. Which does mean he's going to be able to pull back into his own territory. Well, let's just say that actually, if we attack, we've got 1% left. Time to go. Should we pick up anything else there in that However battle? Strong, a general. There is always a way to bolster the oh, yes. with fight. We've picked up a heavy shield. So that gives us plus 10 armor and an extra 4% to missile resistance as well. So we'll definitely take that. No more mounts yet. Titles. Oh yes, we got another level up, didn't we? So if we take Presence, the top level for this section anyway. 10% upkeep, 2 influence, and 30% line of sight. I think right now, though, I could probably do with replenishment. So we'll grab that. It's not going to help us massively, but we do need to replenish some of the men. Okay, I'm not going to try and attack him yet. I don't know if we are actually in range or not. It says we've got 1% movement left if we do attack him. But we'll try Close next next episode. I have other plans. A Milanu. So there's three archer units and two farmers left, basically. There's not many there. Babylon we should be able to yours. dispatch them rather easily. But I shall end it here. So hope you guys have enjoyed. Our general is still alive, so that's a big win. <laughs> 
and I shall catch you all in the next one.